Welcome back. My name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to try to wrap up our experience with HVPi, H5P, excuse me, and their interactive videos. So we're going to be taking a look at fill in the blank, drag and draw, mark the word, dragging text, crossword and, and navigation activity, as well as taking a look at how this manifests itself inside the actual grade book inside Moodle. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm back inside my activity here. You've seen this several times. And we're going to start right here with fill in the blank. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. So fill in the blank, if we click on this, all this should look very, very familiar for you, I hope. So we're going to have to start at zero and have it stop at, oh, let's say two here. So we're going to have this start at, you know, second zero. So I should put a double zero probably so I don't confuse it and finish at two seconds. And of course, we're gonna make it a poster so that it automatically pauses the video. And here's how it works. You have to give it directions. So task description, what do you want the student to do? Whenever you see that red star, you have to do that part. Title can be whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave the default there. And the secret is, as you type your sentence, when you have the correct answer in the sentence, because this was fill in a blank, you want to put it in asterisks. And now the thing is that the student has to be pretty good with their spelling. Otherwise, they're going to have some problems here. So if I had to say something, I would say, let's see here. The, ooh, the capital of Thailand is, here we go, Bangkok. All right. So it, this information right here in the italics, if I can give you a little bit better vision here, just zoom in real quick. This information right here, this is the answer, Bangkok. That's what the student has to type in correctly. So let me go ahead and zoom out again. All right, now there's a few things you can do to make it a little bit more flexible. If you look at adaptivity or is it behavioral settings? Okay, so you can remove the case sensitivity. So for example, if they forget to make a capital B on Bangkok, um, that might help. Also, it says accept minor spelling errors, so it could be a few off a little bit. But one of the challenges with fill in the blank is that because it's being scored by a computer, they're only expecting one answer. If the student's off a little bit, you know, I don't know, maybe an ESL kid puts a C for a K in Bangkok, I guess that can happen, they will get the answer wrong. So you can check these, accept minor spelling errors, turn off case sensitivity to kind of help the students a little bit. <clears throat> So that their score doesn't, you know, get too uh, destroyed there, if they're if you know that they're really going to struggle with that. So we're going to go ahead and click done here. And so if we go back to the beginning and play the video, you can see right there, this is what it looks like. And so now they have to type in correctly the word Bangkok in order to get <clears throat> to get credit if you really wanted to do that. So let's move to the next one. So we did fill in the blank. Okay, drag and drop. Now, drag and drop, we're gonna have this one start at, oh, 10 seconds, and have it stop at 12 seconds. And of course, it's gonna be poster again, because that's my favorite. Now, with drag and drop, you can have the students take an image and put it on an image. Now, you might wanna be tempted to do this with the video. I don't recommend this, because what's gonna happen is that when you try to set it up, to where you want the image on the screen, you're not gonna be able to see the actual video. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I wanna add a background image, it's taking me to my files. It's not taking me to the actual picture on the video screen. So I can't line them up. The only way to do that is if I take like a screenshot of the video and then I can have the students drag and drop the image like that. But that's complicated. So I'm just gonna do a different image for fun. Okay, so here's my, my practice image. And now I have to go to my actual task. So here's the image. Now I can drag and I can have the students drag and drop stuff onto this image. So I need I can add a drop zone, I can add text, or I can add another image if I want. Now here's the thing: the drop zone is like where you want them to put the answer. So I'm gonna just create one of these. Okay, here. We're gonna call it here. We're gonna show the label. Not gonna show the label. Now the opacity is like how easy it is to see this drop zone. So we're going to leave it at 100 for now. And we're going to auto align it. So click done. 
And so now we can move this around and this is going to be where the answer is going to be at. But it gets more complicated. I'll, I'll, wait, I'll get back to that in a second. Hold on. Now, here's the thing. Now I'm going to add the actual image that I want my student to drag and drop onto the drop zone. It could be text or an image, but I'm going to do image here. I'm going to add my image. Number two, like so. I got to give it an alternative. So I'm going to say the, the answer. <laughs> That's what we're going to call it. And now if you look here, down here, it said, okay, where do we put this at? And so I'm going to click on here because remember, I just made a drop zone call here. And so now I'm trying to connect the two. So now when I take answer and put it on the drop zone call here, that'll be considered correct. So I'm going to go ahead and click done. And let me just double check my friend here, drop zone. Now over here, I I'm created this label call here and I have to connect it with my answer that I call answer, my image call answer. Now there should be no problems. Now, <clears throat> here's how you do this. You, ha you have three ways that you can set up this drop, drag and drop thing. You can have multiple blank spots that only, and then the picture only goes in one place, or you can have multiple pictures and only have one drop space. So that's kind of how it works. Normally you would have multiple pictures probably. So you can have multiple pictures over here and they have to try to find the right picture to put on that particular drop zone or you can have many drop zones but only one picture so right now no matter what the student does they're going to get the correct answer because i have one drop zone i have one picture well it's obvious it goes there so there's no mystery here but if you want to make it a challenge you want to have multiple pictures and or multiple drop zones or a combination of both multiple drop zones with multiple pictures so they have to try to drag and drop several different items that's how you would do that. And the idea behind the text is the same thing. This is not an answer. Okay, and then I'm, I'm not going to connect to any drop zone because it's not the answer. Okay, so this is just going to kind of be there. You can see that, so it's not that big of a deal. So I'm going to remove that. So that's how it works. And again, you can provide feedback. You've seen these boxes before. Adaptivity down here. Again, you've seen this before as well in behavioral settings. Again, retry you know, penalties for wrong answers, explanation, all this stuff, you know, it's not that complicated. So we're going to go ahead and move on from here. All right. Now our next one that we're going to do, let's see here, drag and drop. Okay. Mark the word. Let's have some fun here. And we're going to put this guy at 17 seconds. And then we're going to have him stop at 20 seconds. Okay. We're going to make a poster like normal. And then descript, uh, just, uh, instructions here, complete the question. All right. So this one is called mark the words. So how this works is, is that <clears throat> as you are typing, you are going to have to put several words in uh, asterisks. And those are the words that the student needs to click on to indicate that they know that that's the, the important words. So, uh, this is a long sentence in order to make several possible answers. All right. So now I'm going to go back and highlight some of these. So I do that with the asterisk. Let me make this bigger for you. Okay. So I just type. I'm going to put an asterisk here by sentence, asterisk here, and then, so for example, you might want to have them like, you know, mark all the verbs or mark all the adjectives, however you want to do it. Let me go ahead and zoom out of here now. Okay, so those are my two answers, sentence and several, that's it. And again, the adaptivity is all the same again. Okay, we're getting close here. Now the next one is going to be drag the text. That's like drag and drop, you know, more of the same. So I think you guys get an idea of how to do things now. We'll have to start at 24 and have it stop at 27 seconds, poster like usual. And so we want to drag the text onto the actual um, thing. It's kind of like filling a blank, but this time they don't have to worry about spelling. They just put in the information because the available Answers will be off to the side and they just drag them into the text where there's a blank at. So, so I'm going to put here Bangkok 
is the capital of Thai, of put it like this, Thailand. There we go. There are, whoops, there are, are over 70 provinces. All right. So now there's going to be choices off to the side. Bangkok, Thailand. Again, I know you probably can't see this. I'll make it bigger for you. Sorry about that. There's going to be several choices here. Bangkok, Thailand, and 70. Those will be off to the side, and the student has to drag and drop them into the appropriate space. Again, it's not that deep. We're not trying to make trick questions here. And the behavioral settings and adaptivity is all the same. Nothing new here. Uh, you know, they can retry, slowly solution, show the solution, etc. Let's go ahead and move on. Okay. And then after Dragon Text. Now, these last two, I don't really recommend using them. Crossroad and Navigation Point. You would use these if you have a huge, really, really long video, like over an hour. So with the Crossroad thing, you can put some choices here. And then it tells them, okay, what part of the video do you want them to go to? Like, you know, 5 minutes and 30 seconds? Or do you want them to go to 35 minutes and 25 seconds? Whatever. That's what it is. And with the crossroad, you have several choices, so they can skip to different parts of the video. Again, this, this is really complicated, and if you're making 15-minute lectures, I don't really see a purpose for these. And you can't, like, link out of the video, so it's not like you could take them to, like, a web page or something. It's just a chance to jump around inside the, the actual video, which I haven't really experienced this in my own e-learning experience. And then the last one is navigation spot. It's kind of the same idea. You can jump to a different spot, so a time code, or you could jump to another page, a URL. Again, kind of unusual to use this, but it might be a tool you want to use. So we're going to go ahead and get out of there, and we're going to save this, and I want to show you what it looks like. All right. So go down here at the bottom, save and display. So let's go ahead and play this. We don't want any sound. So let's just play this. All right, here's our first one. The capital of Thailand is what? Of course, that's probably wrong. You can see. And so I can retry or show the solution. Again, if I, if I don't want them to retry it, I can change the, the options and check again. OK, this time I got it right. But if you look closely, I didn't capitalize the B. Well, because I changed those, uh, those, those options in the settings, the computer overlooked that. So go ahead and keep going now. Let's see. We're getting close to the next one. All right, here we go. Oh, I didn't make this one big. Okay, so now I got a drag and drop. Well, there's only one spot. Put it right there. Let's see what we get. Okay, good. We got it right. Continue. Again, I could have made that poster bigger. I just forgot. <clears throat> next one's coming up here. All right. Again, I forgot getting, getting lazy here. <clears throat> so I can highlight or not highlight the word. So again, you would probably put better directions here, like you know, highlight all of the, the vocabulary words or highlight all the, the, the verbs, whatever. So I'm just gonna pick sentence and make, and maybe possible, then I'll check. And you can see I got them all wrong. Oh, oh, I got sentence right, so that was one of them. So one of the other words in here is right. So plus one, minus one, minus one. Oh man, no points for me. So I can just click C and now I can see what the words are right there. Again, I should have made this bigger. That was my mistake. Let's move on to the last one. <clears throat> Here it's coming right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. So drag the words into the text box. So you can see down here below we have our words, Bangkok, Thailand, 70, and I would drag these into the spaces. So I put 70 provinces. Let's see here, capital O. Oh. Right there, and then put that right there. And then it asked me, are you sure? No, confirm. It asked me that. I don't know why it asked me that. Let me just go back. There we go. And now we click check. Oh, we got them all right. Great. And so now we're done with that. And so you can see now, I don't know if you can see this, but the little circles down at the bottom, they're now nice and full, indicating that I completed these. Okay, now there's one more thing that we need to take a look at, 
And that is step three. And then we'll wrap this up by looking at the grade book real quick. So let's see here. Click the full screen and then step three. Now the summary task, this is very similar to the statement that we talked about in a prior video. It's kind of like a chance to summarize the entire video. I don't know why they put them separately. It's kind of redundant, but I just wanted to expose you to this. You don't have to fill this part out necessarily. Uh, I just wanted to be aware of that. And so this is kind of another tool right here. So I wanted to make sure I explained that to you. Now, one more thing that you want to make sure is that at the end of the video, you want to make sure that the student submits their answers. So, because I sometimes I have problems with that. Let me make this bigger for you because this is very important. I want to make sure I don't lose anybody. So right here, you see this little star. You have to click on this and it will ask them, you have not answered any questions. You, mu you, you must try, you, must, you have to answer at least one question before you can submit your answers. So you have to make sure that the students submit their answers. And so that's why they must click on the star at the end of the video. So I'm just going to answer one question real quick so that I can show you how this looks. Uh, let's see here. Hanoi. Check. Oh man, I'm wrong. Continue. All right. So now I'm done. I click on the little star at the end and see now it asked me to submit. I must submit my answers and that's how you do that. So I got one right now. Students must do this, otherwise they will not get credit. I've had a lot of problems in the past with students not submitting their answers at the end. They ignore that little star at the end. And if they play out the whole video, they will hit the star and this screen will pop up automatically asking them to submit. Now, let me show you the grade book, what this looks like inside the grade book, and then we'll be done. So if you go inside the grade book, whatever view you like, I like setup, you will see, where is it, where is it? I think it's at the bottom, oh, here it is right here. So you can decide how many points you want it to be worth. You can play with this on your own time. But I want you to know that if you really want to have it in your grade book for points, it is possible. And so if you click on this, you can adjust this. And it shows you the, the results for the individual students, when they took it, and how they did. You can see the report, how many they got right or wrong or whatever. So you can get a lot of information here. So this is how I did when I took it. And so you can see how the students are doing on an individual level and their score. If you don't want it out of 10, it could be out of 50 or 100. It's really up to you. But this is a tool that you that is available for you to help you to better support your students. So in this video, we looked at how to deal with the drag and drop, the uh, drag tags, fill in the blank, all those things, the navigation in the hotspot, all those things like that. And that's what we focused on in this video. And you also got a quick look at you know the summary task at the end and also the grade book, as you can see right here on the screen. So I hope that this video was helpful for you and you were able to understand what we talked about. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.